long time no see i know i promised that i'm gonna be more consistent but yes it's been a while and thank you for your patience so if you're new to my channel my name is chris but you can call me Zelda as well if it's not your first time watching my video then welcome back so the reason why it took me a while to make a new video was because it's too difficult for me to film before um but now that i have my office set up hopefully i can be more consistent i'm not gonna make any more promises i'm just gonna try i'm making this video today because i wanted to respond to some of your comments and questions on two of my top videos in my channel about english teaching in japan so i'm gonna do that today so let's start with the first one this one is not necessarily a question but a comment from Michelle. She also has a YouTube channel actually. She said, wow, special mention by Sensei, you're most welcome dear and hi Sensei. So I think if you watch my very first video about English teaching in Japan, you know that I mentioned her. She is the teacher who really helped me when I was still trying to apply way back in the Philippines. She answered all of my questions. The reason why I really trusted her answers back then was because we were kind of in the same situation. We were both we both had teacher three positions in that ed. So uh, that was like my main apprehension back then. Like, was I going to give up all of that? Was it even worth it? And she answered all my questions. So I really appreciated that. And to this day, I'm still very grateful. So again, thank you, Ma Michelle. Okay, so this one is a question. Can I apply as an English teacher even if I'm actually a social science teacher? The short answer is yes, of course you can. I believe that anyone who has a bachelor's degree can at least try to apply. Now, there are many factors as to whether you will be hired or not, but whether you're a social science teacher or a music teacher, you should still try. Actually, I know a lot of teachers here in Japan who are not even teachers in their home countries. There are nurses, people who worked in the tourism industry or who worked in the social services industry. So it really doesn't matter. As long as you can prove that you can teach English, then I think it should be fine. Hi, thank you for this video. May I know your dispatch company? Um, to be honest, I don't want to disclose it, but I think if you search some of my answers online, you would already know the answer to that. But I don't want to disclose that in this video. Okay, so this one is going to be a long one. Hi, Kabayan. I wish to talk to you more, but how? I'm not going to read the rest of the comment, but... If you would like to talk to me more, you can definitely reach out to me on my Instagram account or on my public um, Facebook page, which I actually recently just changed the name. So you can try and message me and hopefully I can respond right away. But if I can't, maybe I'll do another one of these. And the reason why I'm actually responding to the comments and questions to me on video is because I'm really bad at replying. Even if you ask my friends and families, I'm really bad at replying. Like, I'm always busy with other things and I'm rarely on my phone. So, yeah. Hello, ma'am. I watched your videos on YouTube. I would like to ask about how you became a teacher in Japan. So the answer to this question is one of the videos that I uploaded. So I became a teacher in Japan. Um... How do I became? I applied from the Philippines. I initially worked as an Eikaiwa teacher or an English conversation teacher. And I now work as an ALT or an assistant language teacher at an elementary school here. Okay, so by the way, some of these questions were asked in Filipino or in Tagalog. And for the sake of the other viewers from other countries, I'm going to translate them to English and answer them in English as well. So, for example, this question. Hello, if I may ask, um, I just finished the interview and the first screening in applying as an English teacher in Japan. How many steps hmm, are there in the interview? How many steps? Um, actually, this comment or this question is very vague. 
and I'm not sure for what company, what kind of interview it was. So I don't think I can really answer this fully. I guess I can just base it on my experience. I already worked at three companies here in Japan. And for all of the companies I worked at during the interview process, usually I had to do two to three interviews before I could land a job. The first interview is usually the screening process where they screen all the applicants and then from them they pick out a few and then do a demonstration teaching and then a second interview and then the final interview would usually be just like a formality and just more about the contract and the location the terms the salary so it's usually like that but again it depends um, on the company it depends on the country where you're coming from it really depends on different situations. Hi, may I ask if an individual is still eligible to apply even though he or she is not currently connected to any type of company? But that individual has already four years of teaching experience here in the Philippines. Subject taught in English language, but not in the field of English subject. I'm hoping for your feedback. Thank you very much. I'm assuming that the person who asked this question is a freelance teacher because According to this person, he or she is not connected to any company. So probably a freelance teacher, but not of the English subject, but a subject that is taught in English. It's like what I said earlier, you can apply. Please try. No one's stopping you and there's nothing to lose really. But if you can show, at least like in your demonstration teaching or during the, during the interview that you wouldn't have any problem teaching English, then I don't see any problem with that. When I was still in the Philippines, I had many apprehensions as well. Like, should I do this? Is it worth it? Should I apply? Should I leave my job? Should I leave my family, my friends? You have to think of what's going to be best for you. Um, what's going to help you grow as a person, as an individual. And it doesn't really have to be Japan. It can be South Korea or any country in Europe or any other country, basically. I believe that going outside of your home country can really help you grow as a person. It's all up to you in the end, of course. I'm not pressuring anyone to leave their home country, but if you want something to change in your life, just do it. Hi, I would like to ask if do you have to be a college graduate to become an ALT? It's actually the visa that would prohibit you from working in Japan if you do not have a bachelor's degree. Now, if you don't have any visa restrictions, for example, you have a spouse visa or a descendant's visa, then I don't think you would have any difficulty finding a job in Japan. I don't work for the immigration, so I don't think I should give any advice in terms of immigrating to Japan. But English teaching in Japan is not the only way to come here. You can also take the student path where you come here um, to study, maybe to study the language, continue education come here initially as a student and then eventually transition to working next one hello i would like to ask about visa application i'm currently under technical intern trainee program is it possible for me to apply as an alt thank you in advance and god bless as far as i know if your visa is technical trainee i believe you cannot easily change your visa into an instructor or a humanities visa. You would have to look into it more or you may also visit the nearest immigration office and ask about that. I had a friend who was working here as a trainee and it wasn't very easy for him to get another job or a teaching job in Japan. So he had to go back to his home country and reapply. So that is another option. Please look into that more and ask your local immigration about it. Great video. I have questions that I am in India. Can I apply for these positions in Japan? Kindly respond. The first video that I made was specifically for people in the Philippines. But the second video, the ALT versus Akaiwa, is for everybody. So definitely whether you're from India or any other country in different parts of the world, can definitely apply 
as an English teacher in Japan. In fact, I know many teachers from India and other countries from Southeast Asia who are now teaching here in Japan. So definitely give it a try. Hi Zelda, thank you for this very detailed comparison of ALT and Eikaiwa. I just want to ask, which would be a better choice for professionals just starting to teach in Japan? Is ALT even possible for people teaching in Japan for the first time? Also, is teaching in Japan possible for someone with only an arts degree from a non-teaching course? If you watch the ALT versus a Kaiwa, I think you would have to answer that question yourself. Personally, I don't think I can answer that. Definitely, you would get good things from working in the Eikaiwa industry and you would definitely get great things as well from working as an ALT in Japan. It really depends upon what you want to achieve while you're in Japan. So weigh the options and look at the pros and the cons. Do you want to save more money? Do you want more vacation time? Do you want to spend more time with friends? Or do you want to have enough money to travel Japan? After that, then you can ask yourself or you can choose which would be better for you. Ma'am, are you choosing your apartment or do you have or do you also have neighbors who are Filipino teachers there? So this is actually a great question because I know a lot of foreigners, like many English teachers I met here, they all struggled with getting an apartment or with the apartment that they got through their company. It depends on the company that's gonna bring you to Japan. In my case, when I arrived here for the first time as an English teacher with Amity, they already had a company apartment and everything was ready for me. Like I didn't need to buy anything. There was already a refrigerator, a small TV, um, a microwave oven, a stove, a washing machine. And they also gave me like a one week worth of groceries. So I didn't really have a problem with my initial apartment here. Now when I changed job, that's when I experienced what it's like to get an apartment as a foreigner here. Actually, I made a video about it, so please check it out. I live in a really nice apartment. I guess it's one of the nicer apartments in Japan. It's not easy to get one as a foreigner, but it's also not impossible. And I don't have any Filipino neighbors right now. All my neighbors are Japanese. To answer your question, it depends. You can choose your apartment or your company may be able to set it up for you. Companies set up the apartment for you. For example, I know that for many ALTs who are coming to Japan for the first time, usually they get a Leo Palace apartment which doesn't really have the greatest reputation in Japan. After a few months, you can actually move to a different apartment. So you're not really tied to that apartment forever. You have the option to move eventually. Next. Hi teacher, is it really difficult to find a pet-friendly apartment for ALTs? What are the chances of finding one? This is another great question. Actually, before we moved to this apartment, it was one of our considerations because we really wanted a dog. It will take longer to find a pet-friendly apartment, but again, it's not impossible. If you use sumo.com, you can actually sort or filter the results based on everything that you want. If you want a pet-friendly apartment, then you can tick the box of the pet-friendly apartments and it will show you all the results all the apartments that allow pets and just so you know not because an apartment says it's pet friendly doesn't mean that it accepts all kinds of pets um, usually the apartments would say they only accept small dogs and no cats at all or one pet per household what I would suggest if you can speak a little bit of Japanese or if there's someone who speaks Japanese who can go with you please visit the nearby state agency many places are not even on websites but they are listed on the estate agencies so you'd have to consider that after you move out definitely there would be more damages if you have pets than if you don't have pets okay next question hi i have an upcoming interview with heart corporation anyone here have a direct experience with them any tips ideas or advice how to pass their interview Thanks a lot. I think if you ask anybody or anyone in the English teaching industry in Japan, not a lot of people would say great things about Heart Corporation. I personally 
haven't worked with them so i don't have any personal stories i've only read things from the internet but at the same time you know anyone can post anything on the internet so yeah take everything that you read with a grain of salt as per the interview process of heart corporation i don't have any personal experiences with them so i suggest checking glassdoor for examples of interview questions if you look at other similar dispatch companies like interact borderlink or altia i'm pretty sure the questions would be similar because they are all dispatch companies for alts in japan so go ahead and check glassdoor hi ma'am how much did you all spend to process and apply in japan japan is a no placement fee country which means any company hiring from the philippines should never ever have a placement fee if a company or an agency is charging a placement fee i suggest checking the poea website first to see if the company is legitimate for me the only expenses that i had i think were of course the pocket money i only brought around fifty thousand pesos when i first came to japan the medical fee you should cover the medical fee definitely authentication of the documents that i submitted that's also from my pocket i think those were the only expenses that I had to shoulder myself. The rest, like the visa application, the flights, were all covered by my company. Next question. Hi Sensei, if you don't mind me asking, what are the scopes of interview po in bison management? Thank you. Mine was like almost almost six years ago. So I don't know if, if my memory is still relevant. Of course, I'm sure they've changed their processes. Uh, probably have changed the questions i am not really sure i guess i'm gonna share my experience anyway so some of the questions that i remember why do you want to work in japan what aspects in japan do you like the most what are the challenges that you think you will encounter while you're living in japan will there be any reasons why you wouldn't finish a contract how long do you see yourself working and living in japan those are the questions like japan specific question my strengths weaknesses you know the basic interview questions i was also asked about my experiences my job experiences like what was an experience that was difficult for me and how i handled it i highly recommend again glassdoor please check out the questions there for amity corporation for actually any other company like any company in japan i highly recommend that that would be more accurate than my memory i hope i answered your question and comment if i didn't please feel free to comment in the comment section below and please feel free to share this video to anybody who would find this video useful i will upload more because actually it's my summer vacation right now so i have time i have no excuses I didn't go back home this year again and you know that's for another video thank you so much for watching and have a great day goodbye